Welcome to the heartbeat of our community. It's businesses. From the hum of machinery to the hands that craft with care, we explore the innovative spirit and enduring tradition of Cabarrus County's manufacturers. Join us as we uncover the stories behind the products made right here in our own backyard and celebrate the people who make them. This is where creativity meets craftsmanship. This is Made in Cabarrus. If you compare warehouse and logistics from 10, 20 years ago, it was a lot of safety concerns, it was maybe a lot of quality concerns, and I think that a lot of those opportunities are being addressed with a lot of the automation we're installing here. So the concourse side is going to be a set of the art facility. I think that we can see it from the resources that we are hiring, like all the capabilities that we're bringing on to the, to the site. Also from the automation in regards to the automated guided vehicles, AGVs, that are going to be doing material movements. Also the automated stores or automated like warehouse system that we're going to have. So those are some of the technologies or advancements that we're going to have at the site. We are going to leverage automation in nearly every every facet of the of the supply chain. And to give you an example, we are going to be using robotics in everything that relates to material movement. So it's going to be an automated warehouse with automated guided vehicles with robots that are going to be doing all the material transfer across the site. This has an impact on ergonomics because it's a lot of material handling that is not happening. But at the same time, that is allowing us to use the people, those 600 positions, to be focused on what matters the most, that is to be making medicines in the lines uh, and making those uh, high quality and, and, and safe medicines. It's not about having less people in the workforce, it's about how do we utilize skills to continue to be better and better every day. When we think about advanced technologies, one of the most popular things that people think about is robotics, which all goes into that automation platform. But when a robot comes from the manufacturer off of the line, it's a hunk of metal with tubing and wiring all around it. It can't do anything. And so we have to hire programmers to teach it what to do, engineers to build the facility and put that robot in the exact place for it to do its job, safety professionals to put the guarding around and make sure that we're safe operating around it. We have to have our maintenance staff trained and then operations has to turn the thing on and keep it fed. Really the automation is not about taking away jobs. It's about how can we get more with what we have. When we first brought in our collaborative robot, there was a lot of guys just kind of talking and chuckling saying, yeah, you're, you're going to replace me. You got a robot now. You, I'm going to have to go find a new job. I started laughing. And honestly, the best way to look at that robot is see it as a glorified babysitter. What that robot's doing, it's doing stuff that you really don't want to do. It frees you up to go do the important things, things you want to do. Machinists are craftsmen. They're extremely smart. They're problem solvers, they're dynamic, and they like figuring things out. So when they have that robot changing parts and doing that sort of task, it allows them to figure out how to reprogram the parts to run faster, better tooling, better feeds and speeds, how to get rid of the scrap, and to get better and faster and be more creative. There's more dignity and purpose in what they're doing. So honestly, the robots, they create more jobs than they eliminate when you really look at it. The robot, when we got it up and running, um, it takes an hour in the morning to get it going, hour in the evening to get it going. So you're getting a lot of parts with, with very little manpower. With the robot and the bar feeders and uh, running unattended, I can get one up and running and then go off and do something else. Um, it definitely is a big benefit for smaller companies that can't hire somebody for a full 40 hour week. When it comes to robotics, what we like to see it as is a partnership with our people. It's something that enables them to do their job better. Oftentimes it's taking away high risk tasks or it's allowing them to complete their job more efficiently so that they're a more productive employee and making them a higher quality product. What I've seen evolve dramatically here in the plant um, is, is Corning's commitment you know, to automation to help improve the safety of, of uh, their employees. And, and, and most of these do repetitive um, job tasks. Things that are, have ergonomic concerns, 
they really have put in capital in to, to get those those dangers away from our employees. So that you come to work and you leave the same way that you came. If you imagine a, a Roomba, you know, you set that on the floor and it'll map out your living room or your kitchen. You don't have to program that. It does that autonomously. Now industrialize that. We, we actually use those to do a mundane task of pushing a cart from this room to that room. We let the autonomous robot, you know, mobile robot do that so that our employees can concentrate on more value added tasks. So I, I think that's something that's new. We only have it in a few spots, but it, it's shown you know, a, a lot of promise. So with new manufacturing techniques and capabilities and processes, we also have to invest back in our people and their capability. What we do is we partner sometimes with external vendors who specialize in this training, but also we create content in-house. We're even looking at augmented reality as an opportunity for us to put people in the work environment while sitting in a classroom. As technology advances, Cornyn is always looking for ways to adapt to this new era. So some of the ways that we do that is in streamlining our hiring process, pay transparency, and also making sure that we're competitive in the market with wages. We want to remain diverse in our recruiting practices, and some of the things that we do are grassroots. So it's partnering with our local community colleges, it's partnering with our military outreach groups, but most importantly, it's our employees and our referrals. So those things combined help us recruit in the area. We're always learning every day about new processes and how, how we go to business. In the past, we've worked off assembly line type concepts. There's a lot of, I think, congestion, in a, particularly in a sewing plant where you're trying to move raw materials from station to station. We actually went through a lean process uh, about a year ago and really re kind of organized our, our plan and our facility to really work more off of a sale concept. And uh, yeah, our, our people like it better. They're dealing with you know a smaller group of people. So it really works well. We're getting much better quality products, a lot less defects, and a lot more productivity off of them. As far as us moving the process forward or innovating or making things more efficient, we're always focused on how to take as much cost out of the product as we can, and then also how to improve processes. So what we try to do is focus on individual processes that employees are doing to see if number one, we can automate them. Uh, is there another piece of equipment maybe that can do that faster? or even just look at process to help the employee to do something faster. We try to make, make it so our employees are working smarter, not harder. Five years ago, the system that we were using um, when we were much smaller is not gonna get us you know, to be a bigger and bigger company. So we're constantly looking at softwares to help us improve the process as we grow and change and need to be, have other capabilities, just adding more equipment or more software. Uh, to help us get what needs to be done. When I first got in this industry, it was like zero technology almost, you know, stone age stuff, and now it's cutting edge stuff. So you really have to stay up with it to stay cutting edge yourself. I mean, we have a lot of equipment that's, you know, the first ones in the country. The Zomi printers that we have are cutting edge technology as far as graphics that people are looking for now. We've run a lot of stuff that's uh, uh, on demand. You know, we can run two to 10,000, it doesn't matter. Where in the past, um, you were limited to what you could run. You know, you had to run big orders to, to for people to be cost effective, and now we can run one, two, 10. The difference between flexo printing and digital printing is flexo printing requires tooling that a customer has to purchase. Uh, you could have to purchase up to four plates for four colors. The digital printing is, is a art file that just gets downloaded through software and just automatically prints out. And we can print out different images, one, two, three, four, or the same image without any kind of tooling required. It was a big step for us to purchase one of those. When that machine got here, I wore shorts and a t-shirt, stayed out there six months. It was make or break. It had to work. You know, we'd spent all this money and it just had to work. And But it was unproven really, you know, you couldn't call anybody else in South Carolina and ask them, how do you do this? Because we were the only one to have one. But we only had 50 employees too, you know, and we, and that was like five and a half years ago. And since we made that purchase, you know, now we're at like 160 employees. So it's made a big difference and the company has taken that chance. Modern machinery and innovation are shaping the vibrant manufacturing landscape of Cabarrus County. Next, we look ahead with anticipation to what lies beyond the horizon and how our community is prepared to fuel our future workforce, right here in Cabarrus County.